I'd say this little lad's earned himself an Academy Award. <laughs> you can catch him in his latest critically acclaimed film. I'ma put my thumb in her butt. Are you familiar with Steve Odekirk? You should be if you're older than about 12. Because he's the man responsible for some of the most commemorated and fondly remembered cartoons of the last 20 years. Hi, I'm Steve Odekirk. Jimmy Neutron, Barnyard, uh, Planet Fucking Sheen, all spawned from this guy's brain. Steve's been rocking around the programming block for many years now, and I think it's a damn shame I don't hear his name thrown around as often as many other prominent figures in recent cartoon history. If you aren't familiar with any of the aforementioned kids' shows and are starting to feel old, then maybe you'll recognize Steve as the multi-talented writer, director, and star of the beloved 2002 film Kung Pao, Enter the Fisting. You killed my family, and I don't like that kind of thing. Yep, we're talking about that guy today. <laughs> now, as much as I'd love to give a three-hour lecture on the cultural significance and cinematic influence of Kung Pao, I had something else in mind. Today, I wanted to spotlight what is undoubtedly Steve Odekirk's most eccentric, surreal, weird-ass project to ever grace a television screen. <laughs> is this thing? Thumbs is a series of six short films released between 1999 and 2002, straight from the oven of lunacy that is Steve Odekirk's wild imagination. These films were parodies of famous movies ingrained into pop culture and public memory, such as Frankenstein, The Godfather, Batman, that one movie about the boat. However, the unique quality that set these short films apart from other spoofs of popular movies is that all of the parts are played by Thumbs. And if you can't make the obvious connection between thumbs and cinematic commentary, then I'm afraid you are simply not smart enough to be here. The six entries in the Thumb franchise utilize the cost-cutting technique of superimposing facial features over live-action footage recorded of actual thumbs. This is the same technique that was later used for Evil in 2009 when the annoying orange rose to infamy. Now, Thumbs was not the first piece of media to experiment with this technique. That title belongs to the 1950s Clutch Cargo cartoon. However, Clutch Cargo looks like a cartoon animated by Satan himself, so most people chose to forget it exists anyway. The first installment of Thumbs to premiere was the aptly named Thumb Wars The Phantom Cuticle, released in 1999, which served as a satirization of not just one, but all three of the original Star Wars movies while changing around a few plot points to meet the strict half-hour time slot. I, like many others, was first exposed to this special during one of the several times it aired on Cartoon Network in the mid-2000s, resulting in many a child growing up and thinking, You mean I didn't just hallucinate that show after mommy slipped me the night-night medicine with a side of SpaghettiOs? I do appreciate Cartoon Network introducing these films to new audiences, though, as there's a good chance I never would have learned about them otherwise. I also wonder what in the hell they thought they were putting on the air because there's totally a scene where Thumb Luke and Thumb Obi-Wan catch a glimpse of Princess Bunhead's Thumb Pussy. <laughs> so what kind of highbrow humor are we working with in these parodies? Well, it should go without saying that if you were a fan of the absurdist off-the-wall comedy in Kung Pao, then you'll probably receive some chuckles from any of the Thumb films. And if you thought Kung Pao was trash, then you won't like these. And you also can't be my friend. My nipples look like milk duds! For the sake of genuine critique, most of the comedy in Thumbs for me stems more from the visual gags and design choices. The spaceships in Thumb Wars are all shaped like hands. Darth Vader, aka Black Helmet Man's helmet, is actually a thimble. The lightsabers protrude from thumbnails. It's evident that Oda Kirk and the team behind the shorts were willing to implement whatever ridiculous detail they thought would be funny. And this policy of not being afraid to include anything that might warrant a laugh extends to the writing. You will never be able to predict what kind of joke you're going to see next in one of these. During the climax of Frank and Thumb, a zombified version of Bat Thumb from another short is brought in to save the day. During the sinking of the Thumb Tannic, a giant spider randomly shows up and begins attacking the passengers. It's a gigantic spider! Ah! 
It's like that time you tried to do a creative writing piece, and instead of coming up with a hundred stupid ideas for every good idea, and ultimately trashing them because they don't make any sense, you decided to keep all those stupid ideas, and what you're left with is the thumb movies. You knock me down! I'm a down! Dinner is a ruin! It's actually somewhat brilliant. There's a reason so many people forgot these existed and just thought they were all a bunch of fever dreams they experienced as children. All of them are structured like a nightmare you spend years trying to repress into the deep recesses of your ADD-riddled little boy brain. And revisiting them as an adult manages to elicit that same semi-disturbed, semi-amused feeling. And I think that's kind of neat. <laughs> hey, you're freaking me out here! My personal favorite of the Thumb Hexology is, without a doubt, the Blair Thumb. The Blair Witch Project is probably the most satirized, over-parodied movie of the last 30 years. And rightfully so, it's fucking stupid. Yet somehow, this lampoon starring three potato-shaped thumb creatures is still the funniest one I've yet to see. Most of these short films share similar problems. Lots of the jokes drag on for a minute too long, which is especially troubling since the films only have 30 minutes to be funny. The lol so random non sequitur sense of humor can grow stale over time, especially if you're marathoning these like I did for this video. And worst of all is the problem of the low budget charm found within the shorts being disrupted by the occasional early 2000s CGI sequence. Many of these problems I mentioned are thankfully absent in The Blair Thumb. The pacing is just tight enough to recap the basic narrative of the film it's satirizing while still squeezing in plenty of original jokes. The jokes themselves, while still hit and miss, do manage to hit for the most part, and usually don't stray too far into the realm of incomprehensible absurdity. And the way the short embraces the shaky, handheld, first-person style found within the original Blair Witch manages to blend surprisingly well with the usual Thumb's format. Additionally, this is hands down the most quotable of the six movies. So much so that it's really difficult for me to single out a favorite line among a sea of absolutely golden dialogue. Oh spit! Oh spit, man! Get back to the tent! Oh sure! The tent's safe! Nothing can ever penetrate the nylon! Now I should address the be-all, end-all question. Are these relics of early 2000s satire worth checking out today, now that we've seen a plethora of properties that all try to pull off the parody style for better or for worse? <sighs> Hell yeah! I can't guarantee something as wacky as Thumbs is going to be everyone's bread and butter, but in terms of accessibility and risk-reward, I don't believe you have any excuse not to give at least one of these shorts a viewing. All of them are very brief in length, most of them don't even extend past half an hour, and did I mention that you can find all of them for free on YouTube? Ain't the future just the best? Even if you aren't easily amused by talking thumbs, I believe these films are still worth checking out just to recapture a glimpse of one of the most profoundly bizarre eras in children's entertainment. That being the bridge between the gross-out 90s and the fucking out-there 2000s. A period where nothing was too stupid for television and you could get away with virtually any material your cracked-out mind could think of. Steve Odekirk was honestly quite ahead of his time. All of the thumb films definitely feel like they belong in the early era of YouTube content. Hence the reason why there's so many clips that date back to 13, 14 years ago on this site. Between Thumbs and Kung Pao, Steve was, in my eyes, a true blue shit poster supreme. A comedy visionaire if there ever was one. Sex change! Get your sex change here! Can't get aboard a lifeboat if you're a male! However, after reviewing this unique series of parodies that first graced the screens of America 22 years ago, one all-encompassing question still remains unanswered. Why thumbs? What kind of demon of creative inspiration would possess a man to look at some of the most celebrated films in the history of the medium and say, We've gotta make them fingers. Well, I think I have an answer. Thumbs are a universal symbol that transcend international language and cultural barriers. When you see a thumbs up or a thumbs down, you recognize immediately what it means. By making the pivotal creative choice to have such a ubiquitous symbol be the central focus of his films, Steve Odekirk and O Entertainment succeeded in bridging the entertainment gap. 
anyone from any corner of the globe can indulge in these films. Because, despite the multitude of differences we all share, all the varying cultures, languages, attitudes, and upbringings that separate us in so many of our daily affairs and impact our ability to perceive pieces of media, the one thing that every single human being has in common and is able to come together in unity over is the fact that we've all got thumbs. Unless you don't have a thumb. Maybe... maybe you lost it in a blender accident or something. You, uh... you can, you can go away. I give the thumb movies two thumbs up. Get it? Two thumbs up? It's like... It's like I'm Roger Egbert. I'm gonna be a